We're continuing our coverage of human trafficking in Portland today with a look at the prosecutors who are tackling the issue of sex trafficking in the courtrooms. Fox 12 investigative reporter Ezra Kaplan spent time with police and prosecutors going after human traffickers and has this report. Good morning, Ezra. Good morning. Over the past 10 years, the Multnomah County prosecutors have convicted more people on sex trafficking charges than any other county in the Pacific Northwest. Much of that success comes from the close relationship between the Portland Police's Human Trafficking Unit and the District Attorney's Office. They share a victim-centric, trauma-informed approach, and they walk a fine line between catching the bad guys and protecting those caught in the middle. With a team assembled, Sergeant Christy Butcher is briefing. So today's goals are the directed patrol. We're still getting complaints on a daily basis from citizens not feeling safe in their neighborhoods. So the goal here is obviously to focus on trafficking. This is Portland Police's Human Trafficking Unit. And today, they are out on 82nd Avenue, an area known for prostitution. Detectives in plain clothes spot a suspected human trafficker and call for marked units to arrest him and bring the woman in his car in for questioning. I would like to keep her out of a holding cell if possible. The woman is treated as a victim of human trafficking, so she is offered support rather than arrest. But she isn't interested in cooperating with the police, let alone testifying against the suspected trafficker. These cases are super difficult to prove with no victim participation. However, you know, we have a really good working relationship with our DA. In order to bring a case, um, witnesses have to testify. I can't use an officer to use hearsay, right, to bring in statements from others. Those individuals have to testify. And especially in a sex trafficking case, those acts and crimes are happening usually behind closed doors or in a car or in a hotel room or in a where there aren't many witnesses. Ujafusa leads the human trafficking team for the Multnomah County District Attorney. And in many cases, victims believe that it's their fault or it's their idea because they've been manipulated and controlled to believe that it was their idea, even though someone, a third party, has taken advantage of them. Prosecutors and police work with victims advocates who provide wraparound services and provide a path out of the trafficking life. It means the cases progress at whatever speed the victims are comfortable with. There have been cases that I get called in the middle of the night and it's a young victim in a hotel room who's wanting to talk and wanting to cooperate and that grand jury can happen the next day. And there have been cases that we've indicted that it's 16 years later. So 16 years after the trafficking has happened, the victim is finally ready to go. And if we can collect enough evidence and bring back the things we need to, we can move. It is a lot to ask. Testifying means having to retell and relive the most terrible parts of a survivor's life. There is an argument to say that getting someone onto the witness stand is re-traumatizing them. What I will say, though, is from my over 10 years of experience working with victims, for some victims, it's closure. It's a way for them to tell their story, and it's a way for prosecutors, juries, judges to reaffirm that what happened to them is not okay. Back on 82nd Avenue, officers work on trying to get support for the woman who was riding with the suspected human trafficker. If you guys need help with an advocate, I'm happy to page one out, so just let me know. But the woman isn't interested. All the officers have on him for now is driving without a license or insurance. He's going to be released and cited for the violations. His cell phone will be seized. The hope is to use that cell phone to build a case, but it almost certainly won't be enough on its own. Now, the prosecutors made it clear that while it's incredibly difficult to prosecute a case without a victim testifying, it's not impossible. Cell phones like the one taken from the, suspect, the suspected trafficker you just saw can be a gold mine for gathering evidence. Now, next week, we're going to continue our coverage of human trafficking in Portland with a look at how the community around 82nd Avenue is getting impacted and specifically how high school students are getting caught in the middle. Wow. Wow, and okay. Ezra, it, it must be very difficult for the prosecutors and for police to know if a victim decides not to testify, it's difficult to bring the case to trial because a crime was still committed, Absolutely. whether the victim wants to testify or right. not. Right, both parties, the, the, the police and the prosecutors, both are aware and know that there's a crime prosecuted. But, you know, as, as uh, J.R. Ujafusa was saying, you know, without a witness, it's hard to, com to really prove these things because a police officer's testimony is considered hearsay. It's third person, right. and that doesn't necessarily stand up in court. So, yeah, these things can be pretty difficult. Well, we'll look forward to your next report. Thank Absolutely. you, Ezra.